How's it going guys? This is Najam. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the BMAX B2 mini PC. The B2 is a cheap mini PC with really good specs. Now I'll start by looking around the unit itself. On the front, it's got a headset jack, two USB 3 ports and the power button. On the right side, you have some ventilation. On the back, you have two HDMI ports, two USB 2 ports and an ethernet jack as well as the power in on the left side you do have a micro sd card slot right next to the ventilation as well so it comes with a hdmi cable and the power adapter so i'm just going to go ahead and plug those two in and in this case i'm going to be using a wireless keyboard and mouse combo so i'm just going to go ahead and plug the adapter in for that and i'll get this set up with Windows updates and everything and I'll just go ahead and show you what it can do. It took about one hour and a half for me to get through the Windows updates and while using the PC as it was updating as, as you'd expect it was a bit slow because of the Windows updates but after you've got the updates installed it's really really quick. So let's go ahead and open the task manager up and I'll show you the specifications. So the B2 has an Intel Celeron N3450 CPU which is a quad core CPU with 4 threads and it boosts up to 2.2 GHz. Now it also has 8 GB of DDR4 RAM and on the task manager you can see that all the slots are used up and it's also got a 128 GB SSD. Along with that you do have dual band Wi-Fi and Intel HD Graphics 500 which apparently go up to 4K but the HDMI ports on the back of this PC are only HDMI 1 whichever version so when you're running a 4K display you can only go up to 30Hz so unfortunately uh, that's a bit of a letdown but 1080p is perfectly fine so I did run a speed test on the SSD and it's a SATA SSD but it's really really good now let's start off with some web browsing. The Celeron CPU is actually really really good. It's much better than the Intel Atom CPUs that you find in a lot of the cheaper mini PCs. But this one is much much better. It's 6 watts instead of 2 watts. And it really shows the bump in performance. So web browsing is actually really really good on this. The built in Wi-Fi is really fast as well. So for web browsing, I do recommend this. Now let's talk about video playback in the web browser. In this case, I'm going to be using Firefox and I'm going to be playing a YouTube video. But if you use Google Chrome or the Microsoft Edge browser, it's likely going to have better video performance. But in Firefox, I was able to play 1080p 30 back perfectly fine. 1080p 60 didn't really play all that well and so everything below that is really really good so video performance is actually pretty nice as well and you can definitely watch youtube on this at 1080p playing back videos locally is obviously not going to be an issue so that's all good now office work is also really really good in fact i think this is perfect for that it's got two hdmi ports so you can actually use two monitors for multitasking and that's really cool all the office stuff is actually really really good, it works perfectly fine and it's really quick. Now I'm not all that big on gaming but I can tell you this. Minecraft works really really well at 1080p and so does Roblox. A lot of the older games such as Half-Life 2 or Oblivion are gonna run really really well on this. But it's not a gaming machine, you're not gonna be able to run AAA titles really really well. Aside from that I did test some emulators. N64 works really really well as well. There were some dropped frames but that's very dependent on the on the game so I think mostly you're gonna be fine with N64. I ended up playing SNES and um, that actually works perfectly fine. So for emulation it's pretty good. I didn't test out PSP or PS1 but all the Game Boy stuff is gonna work perfectly fine. Now if you look in hardware info the temperature on this cpu doesn't go above 60 degrees there is a fan inside this but it's 
dead silent it's really really quiet and you're not going to be able to hear it so temperature is not an issue it's never really gonna get hot now the other thing i wanted to test out is linux support so i went ahead and put the usb in and it didn't i couldn't find a way to get into the bios but windows 10 did let me choose to boot from the usb so i went in from there and it did load up lubuntu 20.04 and it did pick up the wi-fi as well as the ethernet and the graphics as well so linux support is really really good it works really well and so if you want to use linux that's going to be a really good option as well it was apparently a bit more faster on linux and i did some office work in there just to see and it was actually much much better but that's up to you if you want to use linux over windows um, in my case personally i do use linux from now on but because I wasn't really able to get into the BIOS, um, if you do need to change some settings or stuff like that, um, I'm not sure how you would do it uh, for Linux, but I suggest you stick with Windows on this, although Linux does work perfectly fine. So to summarize, this is actually a really good PC. For general PC things, it's pretty much perfect. You can even do a little bit of light gaming, and it does a really good job at that. It's mainly suited towards home office use. It's got two HDMI's at the back and I think it's really made for getting work done and using it for work. But uh, performance wise it's actually really really good as well. So if you have any questions ask me in the comment section below. I do recommend this PC, it's really good. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys in another video.